Hi everyone, welcome to the next lesson on electron configuration. In the last lesson we talked about full notation and how to write electron configuration in the full um, the full format or the full notation and we recognize that that can be a lot of work especially for atoms that have lots of electrons. So core notation is the one we're going to learn next and it is a simplified way to write out the electron configuration and it's based around the idea that we can represent um, a big chunk of the electrons um, in a special, in a different way, showing the core. So let's go ahead and, and talk about what that looks like. I'm going to bring us to one of to the page that we were uh, looking at in the last lesson, and we worked out some examples here for some elements like titanium and krypton that have many electrons. And I'm going to use titanium as the example that we're going to look at. And one of the things that we mentioned was that. Uh, it, it has many, many electrons, 22 electrons in total. Um, and it, there must be a, a faster and easier way to write this electron configuration out. So core notation for a neutral atom involves representing the core as a set of electrons that has the configuration of the nearest noble gas. In other words, we are going to replace a whole big part of the electron configuration with the core. So we're going to say that the core is going to be equal to the nearest noble gas and the, it's really important that the noble gas must have less electrons than the atom that we're talking about. So it's another way to say that is the core is going to be equal to the electron configuration of the last noble gas before it. So when you look at the periodic table, if you go back to the last noble gas, you can say that this atom of titanium has as many electrons as the last noble gas plus the remaining outer electrons. Let's look at what I'm talking about here. So for example, if we're looking at titanium, which is right here, I've circled it in red, going back to the last noble gas, argon is the last noble gas. So it would be totally true to say that titanium has as many electrons as argon, okay, so right up to the 3p6 shell, plus it has 4s2, 3d2 filled as well. So instead of writing all of the electron configuration for argon, we're simply going to write argon, and that's going to represent all of the electrons that are contained within an atom of argon. So it is really important that we use a noble gas with less electrons than the atom that we're talking about, or fewer electrons. Um, for example, if I was talking about bromine, bromine, which is right here on our periodic table, uh, is very close to krypton, which is a noble gas, but I couldn't say that bromine has a core of which is equal to the same number of electrons that krypton has. Um, if I did say that, that would be incorrect because bromine actually has one electron less uh, or, or is one electron short of having the same electron configuration as krypton. So we want to go back to the last noble gas. So even in the case of bromine, we would say that it has an electron configuration which is equal to argon plus the remaining electrons. So two in the 4s2 orbital here, um, or the 4s orbital. It's got full a full set of 3d orbitals, and then it has five electrons in the 4p orbitals. So we just want to be careful that we're always using the, the noble gas uh, that came before the element that we're talking about. So let's go ahead and write out the electron configuration for titanium. And we would say that titanium has um, so let's go and write out the core notation for titanium atom. So we've said that it has uh, the same electron configuration as argon at its core and so that these electrons here which represent the electron configuration of argon can simply be replaced by writing argon and we're going to put some square brackets around that and that by just writing argon here with square brackets I've actually represented its electron configuration. So this replaces writing out the 1s2, 2s2 all the way up to the 3p6. Then after that I'm going to write out 
what we call the outer electrons. So the outer electrons are anything that remains after the core noble gas configuration. So we would have 4s2, 3d2, and this would be equal to the uh, electron configuration for titanium. Let's go ahead and um, and write out another one. You'll notice, by the way, in your Hebden textbook that rather than using two dots, it simply writes titanium with some round brackets around the electron configuration. And that is a correct way to represent this. Let's do another example, choosing something from a periodic table. Now we can work with some elements that have um, uh, more electrons, so higher numbers of electrons. I'm just going to erase some of these here for us. Let's go ahead and choose something like, um, let's choose uh, antimony right here. Okay, so now rather than saying, wow, 51 electrons, let's count them all out, we're just simply going to go all the way back to the last noble gas, which is krypton. Okay, and we're going to say that it has the electron configuration of krypton plus, let's come down here, 5s2 and 4d. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because it's got a full 4D set of orbitals. And then in the 5P set of orbitals, it has 1, 2, 3 electrons. So we can go ahead and write that out. So it's going to be krypton, 5S2, 4D10, 5P2. So it would look like this. Antimony which has the element symbol Sb. And we can use round brackets now to start the, the electron configuration. This time we're going to write krypton as our core, as the last noble gas, and then the outer electrons. So we've got 5s2, 4d10. It has a closed set of 4d10 uh, orbitals. And then finally, 5 P2. Sorry, 3. My apologies. And again, if you want to count to make sure you've, you've written it out correctly in terms of electrons, you can always add up the outer electrons. So here we've got 2 plus 10 is 12. Uh, plus 3 is 15, so there's 15 outer electrons here. These are our outer electrons. And we can add that to the number of electrons in an atom of krypton, and it should add up to the number of electrons in antimony. So if we look back here at krypton, there's 36, and so 36 plus 15 should give us 51, and it does. But that's always just a really good check. So there's 36 electrons in the core, and 36 plus 15 is indeed equal to 51. So that's great. Let's try one more example and then you can try some on your own. Let's have a look at um, something like, let's do, uh, let's do something like sodium. Not as many electrons, but we can still write core notation. So sodium has 11 electrons and instead of starting from the 1s orbital and moving down, we're going to go back to the last noble gas which is neon and then we're going to write the outer electrons which will just be 3s1. So it looks like this for sodium. So sodium has an electron configuration with a core of neon that takes care of the first 10 electrons and then 3s1 one and there we have it. Go ahead and try some of these out yourself now using core notation um, and then next in the next quick video we'll talk about the couple of exceptions to the rules here for core notation.